Hey, Coach. You, you, uh, you're you going to see Jared Deggy for the second straight year. I don't know if you guys were really expecting to see him last year, but seeing where some people have him ranked as the second best quarterback in the Big 12, does, does that improvement kind of show up on tape so far? I agree. Uh, yes, it does. Uh, where he is now compared to where he was a year ago when we played him, um, you know, and we didn't know a lot about him, granted, but uh, at the same time, he had shown up in a couple of games a year ago, and um, he he was uh, he was kind of an unknown, but he's he's really putting the ball where it needs to be. Um, he's extending plays, um, making the right reads. He, he's he. I would agree with the assessment of wherever he's ranked there. He earned it. Okay, and then Felix Onadike and Tyron Tolini, I think both had a sack against Kansas. Can something like that really turn the light bulb on for a player going forward? Uh, Football is about confidence. And the more reps that you play, the more confident that you get. The more that you know, the more that you get. Uh, the more plays that you make, the more confidence that you get. And so, absolutely, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that that just starts the snowball effect for these guys. And um, they're both going to have great careers here. I'm hoping that's the, the tip of it. And you might not have a new update on him. We've asked a lot this week, but is there an expectation that you will have A.J. Parker on Saturday? Still uh, trying to figure that out. And he's going to try to do some things today. Um, you know, we'll know more here in a couple hours. Thank you. Michael. Yeah, Joe, what is the challenge that Letty Brown presents? And what about his running style makes him effective? Well, he's a powerful kid. Um, I think that, you know, part of it is he's kind of their Deuce Vaughn. I mean, in, in the ways that they use him, and they'll get him uh, out in space and try to get the ball in his hands as many ways as they can. And, and he's, uh, he's a tough guy to tackle in a one-on-one situation. And so uh, for us, we're just going to try to contain him and, and always make sure we've got an eye on where he is and, and uh, uh, try to get as many hats to the ball as we can. In what ways has West Virginia run the ball more effectively this season? I'm sorry, you were breaking up just a little bit. In what ways has West Virginia run the ball more effectively this season? Um, well, I, I, I think in a nutshell, it's the same basic run plays. I think they've, they've hung their hat on a couple of schemes and they've had success in those schemes. I think where they're better is I think they're just better up front. And, uh, and I know that there's a couple of new faces there, but uh, or I'm sorry, a couple of uh, familiar faces there, but there's also a couple of new faces, and I think they're just understanding probably what they're doing in their schemes a little bit better than what they what they were a year ago at this point. And, and you know, year two in a system, that's going to happen. Else, if uh, if AJ can't go, who are the guys you trust most to fill in a Nickelback right now? Well, Will Jones has, uh, you know, started a game and, and played 60-some snaps against Arkansas State. He's played uh, a significant amount in, in every game this year. I mean, he's been, uh, you know, played 32 snaps last week. You wouldn't have even known uh, who was in the game between him and A.J. I mean, Will's not far off. He's, he's done a lot of good things, and he's improved. I think having A.J. Um, in front of him has helped him a little bit just to see uh, some of A.J.'s process to see maybe how some of his movements, uh, um, to see where he can be patient, where you have to be fast. I think that's helped him understand the game a little bit more. But I, I don't, I don't fear Will being in there at all. And he's a guy that's going to be a, a, obviously a big part of this thing moving forward in years to come. And uh, the other guy that will probably see some more time, or guys, I should say, that'll see more time because of it, if it happens, uh, would be Hunter Henry and Amaris Brown. Um, and those are guys that um, uh, have have got a lot of reps this week with AJ out of practice. All right, thanks much, Coach. Appreciate it. Fitz? Hey, Joe. Um, Tackling is always important, so I don't mean to you know bring it out for this game. But you guys have turned into a pretty good tackling team. When you're dealing with a Letty Brown, is it kind of amplified because he can make you look pretty bad if you miss something right away? He's probably the best player we've played so far. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll throw Sinkfield into that, too. And I don't know if it's just something that uh, luck of the draw or whatever, but those are the guys that probably do the best job with their off arm uh, in terms of stiff arms, keeping people away from their body uh, of anybody that we've played this year. I mean, those guys are really, really good at that. And it's really hard to tackle those guys from a side profile, uh, which is, uh, you know, in football, you get a lot of those 
side profile tackles and, and those guys just do such a good job of keeping you away from their body that they're they're difficult to bring down so uh, I think the key to it is we've got to get more hats to the party you know uh, two guys tackling is always going to be easier than one so we're just going to try to keep that ball in the cup so to speak as we as we as we term it and uh, just see if we can suffocate it when you're going against uh, you know kind of a wide open passing game a spread uh, I know West Virginia shows that in some formations, but really they're a 50-50 team. Uh, is this more challenging to go against a 50-50 team with a, a strong running back who can, you know, if you if you get, decide you want to stop the pass, he can really make you pay? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're going to uh, – it's kind of a – and they have a lot of uh, RPO things in their system too, so it's kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't in some of these cases. And, um, you know, that's where we're, we just got to do a really good job with our looks. We got to do a really good job with uh, getting off blocks in there. But you bet. I mean, yeah, he, he's – and, you know, they get it to him in the open space in the pass game too. And that's uh, – they've had a lot of success doing that. It uh, doesn't always have to be him in, involved in the run. I mean, sometimes they use him as the check down guy in their pass game, and he's just as scary there. They might be 2-2 two and two in the conference, but is West Virginia really that far off of the unbeaten teams or the teams towards the top of this conference? No, I, I don't think so at all. I think that they're they're really solid. I, obviously, I'm not looking at the other side of the ball, but uh, I mean they're a solid group up front. They've got a good trigger man, and they've got really excellent skill players at every position. I mean, there's not a weakness on their on their team from a personnel standpoint. You know, and and, and when they're you know when they put it together, they're really good. You know, and so that's going to be our our trick to try to keep them off rhythm as much as we can.